distinguished uh, panelists, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very exciting afternoon for me because of the audience that I'm looking at. This is the first opportunity I've had to speak to this audience. And it's exciting because I'm here to share with you some dismal statistics about the topic we're going to talk about today, equality. And when I talk about equality, I'm speaking particularly about the participation of women in the workforce. What I'm also excited about is that this topic of equality is gaining momentum in our country. I like the fact that it's been spoken about in a lot of important forums, forums such as this, with so much power and influence all packed in one room. And I know that if each of you in this room were to do one thing, just one thing, after this particular session in relation to the promotion of the empowerment of women and their participation at the higher echelons of the private sector, we will be looking at a very different picture come the same conference next year. In Fiji and across the world, equality and diversity at the workplace is an ongoing conversation, and rightfully so. To foster equality, we need to dissect and understand gender, and a liberal space, space such as this is a great platform to band together and talk about gender and the interrelated issues that come with gender in the workplace. workplace. And when I talk about these interrelated issues, I'm talking about sexual harassment, unequal pay for work of equal value, sexism, unconscious bias in recruitment processes, the role of women as caregivers to their children and loved ones, domestic violence, and the list goes on. In a world that is increasingly reliant on productivity as a measure of well-being, the engagement of all available resources is critical if we want to see success. Despite this universal truth, and despite the fact that equality is a basic human right, women continue to be marginalized, discriminated against, and excluded in all segments of society, including in the workplace. Ladies and gentlemen, equality within the workplace will not happen as a given. It requires action, intentional, targeted action. So what's the business case for gender diversity? I know I'm talking to an audience that wants the numbers. Why would I want this in my workplace? Particularly for increasing the proportion of women in the management and board pipelines. The business case is compelling. To be successful in the global economy of today and tomorrow, smart companies will make gender diversity a key component of their business strategy. Demographics, technology, innovation, and business disruption, together with globalization and international trade, are continuously transforming our global labor markets. A recurring challenge faced by enterprises amid this ongoing challenge change is the growing skills need. Given that women surpass men in educational level in many countries, including Fiji, they represent a formidable talent pool and an underutilized resource in an era of skills shortages. Investing more in recruiting and advancing women can be justified if we were to carry out a cost-benefit analysis. So I'm going to give us a few facts. Globally, since 1991, the share of women's participation in the labor force has grown. A study carried out by the International Labor Organization in 2019, it found that the share of women in managerial positions across the globe is also growing considerably, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region. A good example, in Thailand, for example, a greater representation among middle and senior management, reaching almost 30%. And when gender equality experts talk about gender equality, they're looking at 30%. That's all we're actually aiming for at this time, critical mass at 30%. But we can do much more than that. What I'm pushing for is 50% and more. 
Of the companies surveyed in 78 countries that track the impact of child, uh, child diversity in management, 74% report profit increases of 5 to 20%. This confirms that enterprises with a gender inclusive culture are 9% more likely to have improved business performance. Again, this is from ILO 2019. They also found that enterprises with gender balanced boards are almost 20% more likely to have enhanced business outcomes. Another company, com company research, McKinsey and Company in 2018, found that out of the 1,000 companies in 12 countries on the impact of diversity in business, shows that companies in the top quartile for gender diversity on their executive teams are 21% more likely than other firms to report above average profitability. And every 1%, 1%, of female employment growth is associated with, on average, annual GDP growth of 0.16%. And that's from the World Bank. The World Economic Forum, 2017, predicts that if the global gender gap in labor market participation is closed by 25% by 2025, we are looking at an additional US $5.3 trillion added to GDP globally. So a gender-inclusive culture requires a critical mass of women in management, senior leadership, and on boards of directors of at least 30%. There are a couple of prime contributors to the short four that we're looking at. We've heard, I'm sure, we've all heard of the glass ceiling. I'm here to talk about the leaky pipeline, where representation of women decreases as the level of management increases, resulting in continued male dominance of the chief executive levels and boards. Over 78% of enterprises surveyed as part of the ILO study of 2019 on global research on women in business reported having a male CEO, 78%. In Fiji, as of 2018, March 2018, only 13, one three, of the 105 directors from the 19 South Pacific Stock Exchange listed companies are women. 2019, I'd like to quote the Fijian Holdings Limited CEO. I'm not sure if he's here. It's, um, he called it a shame that nine out of 10 boards in Fiji don't have females as board members. And FHL, proudly stands as a, as a company that has 50% of its CEOs as women. And, this, and they put it down to the, the inclusion of women in their managerial positions as being a key contributor to this. Apart from the leaky pipeline, there's also the glass wall. The obstacle to gender diversity, how many managers are segregated by gender and women are more often managers in support functions, such as human resources, finance, and administration, while men dominate functions that are considered to be more strategic, such as research and development, operations, profit and loss, that typically lead to the CEO and board membership position. This gender division of management functions raises issues around possible gender stereotyping during recruitment and promotion processes. It also suggests that women and men are pursuing different studies, and that the gender division of works starts earlier than at management level. Male-dominated or male-only boards are less likely to achieve equilibrium between men and women in middle management, while enterprises with women as board chairs are more likely to have gender balance in middle man management. And then we have an enterprise culture that predominantly requires working anytime, anywhere the availability of an employee in those circumstances, anytime, anywhere. This creates an unfair impact on women who generally carry greater household and family responsibilities. For the economic empowerment of women and for effective participation of women in the workforce, we've got to think about also of the role of women in the unpaid care economy, the role of women of taking care of loved ones. And I'm really happy to see a champion of that particular principle of taking care of women in the workplace here on the panel. I'm rare to hear from, from him, Mr. Harvey. There are tried and tested ways to close the leaks in the pipeline and remove the glass walls. 
It starts with a gender balanced workforce, 40 to 6 percent, 40 to 60 percent at least. Gender representation in all corners of the human resource structure of an enterprise has also an impact on where women are likely to be situated across the organization. There's a positive association between having a female CEO and greater gender diversity in middle, senior, and top management positions, indicating that the presence of a female CEO creates incentives for gender diversity. Cro corporate gender inclusive policies and their enforcement are also critical for achieving gender balance at all levels. The gender pay gap must also be closed. Policies that can lead to greater inclusivity and work-life balance for both men and women, such as flexible working hours, are important. Some enterprises are already introducing systems and technology that focus on capturing employee performance or productivity in tandem with flexible working arrangements. This model could be as or even more effective and sustainable than the anytime, anywhere approach. Data shows that many women are surpassing men in higher education and across diverse disciplines. If we were to look at our country, for example, around 60% of people graduating out of our universities are females. When you look at entry into the workforce, the statistics holds. But when you look at the climb up that ladder, it basically inverts itself. The same is true for the public sector as well. Attention must also be paid to support more girls and women to be in technology and engineering, engineering studies and corresponding industries to prevent gender segregation from early ages and combat future skills shortages. So what can we do? In a lot of forums, when we talk about the inclusion of women in the workplace, a lot of employers, yes, they think, yeah, I want to do that because the business case is strong, but how do I go about doing it? For us who are here today, I'd just like to point to one guideline that's already there, already been produced by UN Women and the Global Compact. What it does, it puts forward seven principles. It's easy to follow for employers. It gives us a guideline on what we can do out of uh, the seven prin principles that would enhance the inclusion of women in the workforce and especially at managerial level. These seven principles include, for example, number one, leadership promotes gender equality. And just one indicator or activity that I'd like to point, uh, pick out of that, a firm high level support and direct top level policies for gender equality and human rights. Number two, equal opportunity, inclusion, and non-discrimination, one indicator, assures sufficient participation of women, 30% or greater, in decision making and governance at all levels and across all business areas and support access to child and dependent care by providing services, resources and information to both men and women. If we are to look at health, safety and freedom from violence, that's another principle, the third principle under this guideline. It's to establish a zero tolerance policy towards all forms of violence at work, including verbal and or physical abuse and prevent sexual harassment. As a starting point, do the organizations that we represent, do they have sexual harassment policies? Can we recognize sexual harassment? Sexual harassment, if it happened in the workspace, what does it entail? If you to look at the cultural diversities that we have, if you take the Itaoke culture, for example, we've got something called the Bita Wutaki. Where does that stop? And where does sexual harassment pick up? And if a person in your workplace has been sexual harass harassed, does that person know what avenue to follow to report that? And is management enlightened about the topic of sexual harassment and is able to deal with it in a way that does not make the complainant more of a victim at the end of the day? All these factors affect the inclusion of women, the participation of women at the workplace. And I look around and I see very influential leaders in this room today. You have the power, the privilege, and the influence to change that story for the private sector in Fiji. And again, I hope, if we were to take one thing away from this, from this particular uh, contribution to this panel, I'd like us to just go online and Google the seven principles under the UN Women website. Google the seven principles 
And the speaker just one activity to change the culture around the workplace in support of gender equality and the participation of women in the workforce, particularly at managerial level. Thank you very much.